Broadcasting the information the mainstream media won't touch. This is The Richie Allen Show in association with DavidIke.com. I am joined, uh, hopefully this time, by the terrific Patricia Finn. Patricia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that nice introduction. I, I heard you. I don't know if anybody else did, but you're very, very kind and, and flattering. We're, we're very humble attorneys here, though, in New York, trying to, trying to do the right thing and support uh, Dr. Wakefield. Well, it's fantastic. Um, you are humble. There's no doubt about that. But I, I've heard quite a bit about you. And obviously reading publications like Natural News and, and others, and um, your name has come up a few times on davidike.com and elsewhere, ever some of the work you're doing. So um, uh, it is great to, to finally connect with you. And you wrote a terrific blog, it must be said, a terrific article about Vax and what's happened. And folks, you can find that by simply going to pfinblog.weebly.com. And I'm going to tweet that now uh, while um, Patricia is chatting. I'll tweet it out there. Patricia, as far or as recently as Friday, Robert De Niro was obviously very involved with the Tribeca Film Festival. He stood by the decision to screen the film. And then late on Saturday, and I do a Sunday morning um, talk programme, we learned that the film had been cancelled. What's going on here? What's really going on behind the cancellation of this film? Well, um, you know, it was a surprise to all of us. It was a surprise that it was going to be premiered, and and then it was a surprise when it was pulled down. Uh, I'm told that uh, Robert De Niro was under extraordinary pressure um, from mainstream media and uh, some of the foundations that were involved in supporting it. I, I mean, I don't know what his choice is, but I, I do. What I do know of the man um, is that he's a, a great guy and a New Yorker and uh, committed to the community and and the state. And I'm sure it was a very hard choice for him uh, to make. And I guess the backlash that he felt was was tremendous. And and he has to protect his family too. You know, there there was a lot of discussion, personal discussions about um, his family and his children. And I can tell you that the people I represent, um, actors or famous people or regular moms and dads, that's their number one concern that they don't want to be associated with this subject uh, or, or anybody to know that they're not vaccinating because they're afraid of backlash. So I don't I don't quite know what he did, but he certainly had a right to do it. And uh, we're, we're just going to a bigger theater. That's I think it it's um, first of all, first of all, it's very magnanimous and it's very fair. One of the things in the independent media we see sometimes is we see people ganging up on somebody and screaming at them without for a minute thinking of putting yourself in, in, in their position for a minute. Obviously, Robert De Niro was interested in the film. Um, as has been widely reported, one of his children has autism. He's, uh, you know, a guy who he, he he's got opinions. He's a guy who's interested in in, uh, in 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 learning. He's interested in the other side of things. But as you said, you know, it's easy to scream from the sidelines and say, "Oh, you chickened out, or you did this, or you did that." A different kettle of fish altogether. Being in his position, but you you said there it's going to be in a bigger theater. This is good news. Where is it going to be? Where is it going well, to be shown? Uh, I, I know that there's people in New York, uh, Gary Null, I, I'm sure you know him. He is a uh, health advocate here in New York. Um, he's working on trying to find a theater. I've contacted Donald Trump, asked him if he could swing it in Times Brilliant. Square at the Jumbotron. Why not? <laughs> Why not? He's done everything else. And he, he owns, he probably owns the Jumbotron. Um, but, you know, we're we're working and, and it won't stop. And, and And what's so extraordinary is that uh, the health officials, in particular, the uh, Dr. Zucker here in New York City, uh, you know, she really came out swinging, uh, blasting the movie and nobody's ever seen. No one's seen the movie. And and uh, she furthered uh, the criticism of Dr. Wakefield uh, with adding that, you know, vaccines uh, do not cause autism. And, you know, I've been researching this subject for years, and uh, the only evidence that these state officials and city health officials have that vaccines do not uh, cause autism is the so-called discredited work of Dr. Wakefield. And, 
in in his observation that was published in the Lancet Medical Journal, he never once ever said uh, vaccines cause autism. So how he said it needed to be further studied. So how that turns around to proof that vaccines do not cause autism, it's it's really disturbing. And and when you call these people out on it, you know they go for your juggler, they go for your kids, they go for your license and. And they, you know, they do some bad stuff, but it, it seems that the, you know, the swell of support and, and of course, social media, you know, I, I've had the ability to contact, you know, hundreds of thousands of people uh, over the web that never would have heard a peep out of Patty Finn if it were, or maybe a soundbite, you know, now and then. Um, and there's a lot of people involved here that are putting out the truth, really, really good information. And you know, what I, I've met Andy a few times, uh, my heart breaks for him, what happened to him. And uh, but in the end, I, I think that his film is going to make history and, and we're behind him. And we love we love a good row in New York anyway. Fantastic. I mean, we're just going to get a bigger theater and show it somewhere else. Well, being, well, a, being a New Yorker and with a name like Patricia Finn, I know you refer to yourself as Patty. You asked me about my origins. I mean, you, you've got definite connections to the old country, don't you? With a surname like Finn. So either your parents or, or your grandparents are definitely Irish. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, well, my dad uh, grew up in Ireland uh, and uh, I'm all, you know, pure 100 percent Irish. I'm a big, uh, big hit on St. Patrick's Day. Fantastic. And um, yeah, you know, and I'm proud to be Irish in my heritage and, and I'm Irish Catholic and I um hold uh, religious beliefs contrary to vaccinating based on uh, Catholicism. I've, I've embraced other uh, religions, uh, Buddhism and, you know, Dharma and things like that. And I've been exposed to the thousands of religions out there. And I can tell you at the end of the day, they're all the same in the, in the true form. You know, it's about living pure and clean and healthy and vaccines they they just don't fit that formula. So in New York State, uh, we are allowed a religious exemption to vaccines. And um, unfortunately, that's getting worn down, too. But we're, we're fighting back. And I want to so talk about that now, um, Patricia, and what you do and what you have been doing. And you talked about the way people are attacked. And I imagine as an attorney, you know, you're obviously smart, you're bright, you're qualified. You know, people certain people don't like the fact that somebody like you especially you mentioned the fighting Irish in you and, the, you know, the, the love of a good confrontation. I'm sure it's cost you over the years and we can talk about that in a few minutes. But since you mentioned uh, the Donald, let's go back to the Donald, uh, Trump himself, uh, who comes up a lot on this programme, unsurprisingly. What what has he said about his own opinions on vaccinations, Patty? What has he said? Well, you know, I'm I'm limited by what I see in the press, uh, too, but I, I do follow it very closely. And I've known for years uh, his opinion on vaccines. That wasn't a surprise to me. And, you know, what, what I love about Donald Trump is what he's not. It's not what he is. It's what he's not. And, and his position on vaccines are that there's too many too soon and uh, they need to be slowed down and or, or at least examined. And he was the only uh, candidate that was willing to say that. And it was funny because in retort, Dr. Ben Carson said, well, you know, doctors are, are slowing down the schedule. Nothing could be further from the truth. Here you have Dr. Ben Carson, another man I admire and respect greatly. But but to, to state during the debate in, in retort to Donald Trump's comments, that um, pediatricians are slowing down uh, the rate of vaccines it is completely not true. Kids are, are deluged with shots in New York State. Uh, you have to get close to 65 vaccines uh, by the time you're 15 in order to go to school. And the deluge uh, is mostly in the first 18 months. Um, and and uh, coincidentally or tragically, that's when uh, the autism uh, starts to manifest. Parents will heavily vaccinate their children and then all of a sudden uh, notice uh, that the child is, is regressing and and uh, not speaking or was walking and, and, you know, just kind of slips or absorbs into their own body. 
And, and I really need to point out why that is so significant. Under the Vaccine Act, there is a three-year statute of limitations, and, and it is from the onset of symptoms. It's not from the diagnosis. And what has happened here in the United States is that a lot of these kids that were deluged with these shots around 18 months, their parents went to the doctor and said, look, something's going on, this is wrong. Well, hence the manifestation of symptoms. These kids often don't get diagnosed till they go to kindergarten. And, and by then they're outside of the statute of limitations and they cannot be compensated. And, and that, is, that is a huge problem with the Vaccine Act and the legislation is that very short uh, statute of limitations. And I, I've, I've seen it thousands of times. It's tragic, it's tragic. You just cannot get compensation for it. You, um, you have had success though, Patricia. Your firm has had notable successes, serious successes in successfully suing on behalf of people with vaccine injuries. One of the things I like to do on this programme, because so, we talk about so many awful things, I like to bring good news to people. And my God, you've had a lot of good news over the years. You've done some incredible things. Talk to us about some of the notable successes that you had in suing on behalf of people injured by vaccines. Um, well, we, we've handled our fair share of cases. Um, I've had a couple of hearings. I have a hearing right now pending one of the remaining autism cases. There, there is still activity going on there. Uh, not every case has been dismissed. And, um, you know, there's a lot of new evidence now. Of course, Dr. Thompson, the CDC whistleblower, uh, is, is coming forward. And I, I have a really huge case uh, that I'll, I'll talk to you about that we're we're commit, we're going to be commencing here uh, very soon. Um, in fact, I was working on it when you called me, and it, and it basically ties the whistleblower evidence uh, to uh, fraud in in the omnibus proceedings that dismissed those claims. But um, you know, recently I I had a very very tragic case, probably one of the worst uh, vaccine injuries that I've ever seen when someone survived. I, you know, a lot of people unfortunately do pass away from vaccines and they're either, especially the elderly who are, are heavily vaccinated in nursing homes and, and things like that. And, you know, they'll get a deluge of shots and die the next day and no one really ever ties it to uh, the vaccines. But uh, this one particular case, uh, I just settled uh, for $19 million and uh, this young boy, uh, got uh, vaccines and uh, he developed uh, myelitis within a few weeks of the shots and he's now 19 and uh, completely crippled. He, he has the use of only one arm and uh, in that case the government did concede uh, that the vaccine caused the injuries. So when you, when you have the city uh, commissioner of health, Dr. Zucker, attacking Andrew Wakefield and, and just you know, spewing out that vaccines don't cause autism. Well, they, they crippled this young boy. So obviously there, there's something going on there. No doubt you know, about it. Can I just ask you on that? I mean, that's an amazing um, success. And it, it, it hopefully that money will go. I'm sure it'll be appealed or it, it has been appealed. But that money will, of course, um, go to alleviate the the struggles of the of the gentleman involved who was injured by that vaccine and that's hugely important but there is support um for you and people like you isn't there because i'm thinking of robert kennedy jr for example he's been very outspoken hasn't he and i'm sure you've gotten to uh, to know him and, and 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 what he's been saying and he's a pretty he's a heavyweight this guy i mean he's a kennedy i mean he's bobby kennedy's son and he's asking questions Oh, he's a great guy, and uh, he he's been a leader, uh, and in the in the community here, and and you know why we're so active in New York is there's a lot of reasons. Um, pharma is located in New York. You know, most of the pharmaceutical companies are located in Connecticut, California, uh, Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey, and you know I, I hate to scare people, but some people don't realize that these these doctors or these companies, you know, they, they came out of Germany after the war, you know, that that's where they got their start uh, vaccinating. And, and even some of the doctors that 
began these pharmaceutical companies here in New York and New Jersey uh, were prosecuted. And then they were released uh, and came here in New York. And, and you have the same companies that were experimenting in Europe during the war on children, uh, kind of doing the same thing here. And, and New York is very, very pro-pharma state uh, because of the lobbyists and, and the employment uh, that goes to pharma. And uh, we've uh, been very organized and pushing back against that. And, and Robert Kennedy is a professor at the law school where I went to and my neighbor, he lives close. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's been tremendous. I didn't really know him though when I, when I first started this. In fact, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know Andy Wakefield or any of these people. <laughs> the reason that I didn't want to vaccinate, I can tell you hands down, was, was truly purely a, a religious uh, reason. I, I believe my body is a temple and a sanctuary, and I wasn't going to inject anything into my body that I didn't know where it came from, and, and I wasn't going to do that to my children. And um, so when I started this journey, it was really based upon religion. I, I shied away from the science because I didn't have the money uh, to fight them on that. Was it easy, I, Patty, at the time, when you decided not to vaccinate your your own child. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking that. We're getting absolutely hammered with tweets now. This is a live radio show going out um, in Britain on davidike.com, on Fab Radio 2 and on ACR. So we have a huge audience and they are tweeting. Um, I mean, there's hundreds of tweets coming in here about this. And a number of them are saying that, and including somebody who works um, or has worked with me on programmes in the past, is saying that there is more and more and more pressure coming from local health authorities, particularly here in Britain, where whereby they're basically not accepting people saying, well, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm not going to vaccinate my my baby boy or my baby girl. I'm not having it because I don't I'm not sure it's safe. Um, people are are scared, Patty, in this country that they might somebody might make a decision and say, well, you're not doing what's right for your child. Therefore, we maybe need to take your child away and and put your child in care. And, and that's not even, you know, that's, that, that's not exaggerating. That's what's going on here. Was it easy for you to make that decision? What, what sort of blowback did you get when you said no? You know, I, I didn't get any blowback. I, I managed to skate through very quietly. But, you know, I'm a lawyer and um, it was easier for me than, than it is for someone. Plus, I was accustomed to being, you know, more outspoken. I, I you know, troubles followed me my whole life. And, I mean, I, I believe I'm a moral person and a good person, but I have had my share of troubles. And I've had visits from CPS workers uh, for anonymous calls made against me. And, and I can tell you that the people that came here were very respectful, very kind. And I never, ever had a problem for me. However, in my practice, I've seen horror stories, you know, medical kidnapping, um, Alex Bertolakis, that story, Dr. Wakefield did a documentary on that poor boy and and the tragedy uh, that he suffered. And and it is it is very, very scary. But But I think that you know, a lot of this is not real either. You know, pharma is uh, is multiple. They have robotics, right, that go out on Facebook and Twitter, and yeah, they yeah. and they're not real. Or, or for example, you might have one person that has a hundred different uh, handles or names, and and they're going after you, and um, they're not real. These these things aren't real. You you have to look beyond that and. For me, you know, my faith is is what sustained me. That that's what gets me up. And that's why I know that, um, you know, I'm not the greatest lawyer in the world. I, I'm I'm probably heavily under resourced uh, compared to Merck and all these other people. But uh, it's not about money. It's a it's about consciousness and awareness and faith and. You can't beat that. And and believe me, I'm about to take on Merck with uh, Dr. Thompson's studies and, and some other stuff that I did blog about the other day for that young kid in New York City that uh, was denied um, compensation. His case was replaced for Hannah Poland's. That was what I wrote about in the blog. And, and we're, we're getting ready to commence uh, a lawsuit against him. 
And if I try to fight Merck or a CDC dollar for dollar, I'm going to lose. It's, it's just not going to happen. I have to fight them on, on the Constitution. I have to fight them on the law. And I, I have to fight them on the will of the people. And, and what Robert De Niro has done that I'd like to kiss him on the mouth if I ever meet him is to thank him because for whatever his reasons are, he, he pushed this thing forward, and now it is, it is the topic of conversation. Everybody's talking about it. And you couldn't buy the publicity, Patty. You couldn't buy that sort of publicity. It's, it's fantastic. So many of our listeners have tweeted that, that exact line there. It's marvellous. You couldn't buy the publicity. I'm just going to read out a few tweets. Um, we won't keep it too much longer. I know you're busy there, and I'm not patronising you when I say that. I know you are busy. Uh, you keep very long hours. I have no doubt. It's 24 minutes to the top of the hour. This is the Richie Allen Show in association with davidike.com on Fab Radio 2 in Manchester and alternatecurrentradio.com as well. A huge, huge, huge amount of tweets coming in. It's going to mention names. Wayne, Martin, Noakes. Martin Houston said this. Get it um, into Central Park, New York. Get a big, massive screen there and get hundreds of thousands of people, uh, you know, to, to make, to, 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 to pay a couple of bucks uh, to go and see it. Uh, that might not be a bad uh, idea as well. Uh, Operation Paperclip or Project Paperclip, depending on what you call it. That's what you were referring to, Patty, the Nazi scientists coming in. A couple of listeners asking, do you have to be careful to not come across sounding like a conspiracy theorist or is that something that doesn't bother you and um, do you subscribe to the opinion that you know the real reason for putting 25, 30, 40 vaccinations into our children is to um, is to change us, is to biologically change us for another agenda what do you think about that? Well uh you know, I'm not naive, and and there there is uh, conspiracy stuff going on, but I don't really give the people involved here the credit to to put the conspiracy together. It's it's purely money. They're they're profit motivated, and uh, there's pressure on the politicians um, to bend to the pharmaceutical companies. So, do I think you know there's <laughs> bunch of Nazis sitting around uh, discussing how, you know, they're going to stop Wakefield's movie. No. Uh, but I think there is a uh, a level of thinking that is frightening. And, and the United, in the United States, the Constitution has guarantees that um, of freedom, uh, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, equal protection, due process. And, and they don't necessarily attack a, a, a conspiracy, but but they provide a wall that that prevents those things from happening. And, and I am concerned that it is eroding, um, but it's eroding because nobody wants to go into politics. No, everybody's afraid. And, and again, you know, that's why a guy like Donald Trump, he's not beholded, uh, beholding on to anybody. Uh, he, clearly, he's gotten plenty of press, so he didn't have to spend any money on his campaign. And whether you like him or not, you know, you, you really have to admire uh, his his honesty about or, or his passion. And I kind of lawyer this same way, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not sure I was always I, I, I was always respectful, of course, to the court, because I believe the court stands between us and ruination as hard as it is to get in front of a judge and as expensive and as difficult and sad as it can be sometimes you have no choice and and we have to do that so am i a conspiracy theorist no i think this is all purely profit and that the the courts are going to uh, protect the rights of individuals including the vaccine court you know that that court is often trashed to to kingdom come about uh being corrupt and this that and everything else i have never seen that and now i i'm telling you from someone who practices in that court the, the people, even the DOJ lawyers, everybody is reputable, everybody is concerned, uh, they're, they're government uh, service people, and, and very, very concerned. What, what happened in the omnibus proceedings, uh, you know, that was not the fault of the court or, or the short statute of limitations either that, that's in the statute, why all those families get bumped out. That, that's a legislative problem. And people have to get involved and, and make changes. You have to run for office. I, I ran for judge and um, I'm going to run again. You know, I, I'd like to run maybe uh, for Congress 
and I'm going to continue to forge ahead. And, and I hope that I, since I have no money, I'll be as lucky as Donald <laughs> Trump. God speed it, and then I'll have uh, the community behind me the way they are now. I think it's you- absolutely amazing what you're doing. I do think you're right up to a point. I think um, I mean, you obviously know far more about the law than I do. I think you're absolutely right up to a point when it comes to profit. But I do, I've come to believe myself, uh, Patty, and I'm somebody, I majored in European history and English at uni, went on to do television and radio and worked in mainstream commercial radio for years and find myself now considering possibilities that I would have thought were absolutely outrageous um, several years ago. I do subscribe to the theory and my some of my friends and family think I'm crazy is that while profit is absolutely right at the top of that agenda um, the manipulation of our body on a cellular level I believe that's going on as well and I think depopulation very well might have something to do with it I'm not just parroting David Icke now because David is a friend and a colleague I've just come to believe that I believe that, um, that that's what I've come to believe but um, that's, of course, of no consequence to you. And that's not very practical when you're arguing against, you know, vaccines making people sick and vaccines giving people, um, you know, possibly giving people autism. i got to ask you this. We've only got another, we've just got a few minutes before we, we do let you go. This is hugely important. The case against Merrick and, and William Thompson. I'm delighted that William Thompson is alive, by the way. Yeah. I really am. Because a lot of our listeners believe that people like William Thompson have been going missing. And that other people, other doctors who've been asking questions about vaccines have been uh, meeting with unfortunate accidents and stuff like that. Do you want, if I didn't ask this, my listeners would think I'm pathetic. They're asking me on Twitter, are you concerned? Do you believe that doctors and whistleblowers have been and are being targeted like that? Well, I've read the same study or the same articles and reports that you have. I I read a a report, a blog uh, about a year ago that there was like six homeopaths and holistic doctors. I I know Dr. Bradstreet died uh, recently um, after speaking at Autism One and and things like that. And there was some mystery around his death and some other things. Um, But I do have intelligence about some things that probably the community does not know. And uh, no, I do not think that they're being uh, offed. Uh, I don't. I I think it's weird. And and this stress of killing you doing this, that's for sure. But um, you, you just have to let go. You know, you can't get attached. You can't get attached to your license. You can't get attached to autism and vaccines, you know, I, I have a job to do, uh, but I, I try to be selfless about it so it doesn't uh, contaminate and hurt me. And um, so those things that have happened, you know, they are scary. Um, and, I, you know, I listen to Alex Jones a lot. I love him and Mike Adams, great guys here in New York or in the U.S. Um, and, you know, sometimes I I get concerned about the, the scaring of people. I don't want to scare people. I, I mean, those things may be true. I grew up in New York City. Believe me, if you wanted to be scared, there was plenty yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I can't live my life like that. I, I And I'm not. So uh, I am glad, too, Dr. Thompson's alive. I spoke to uh, his attorney a few months ago, and I asked him for an affidavit, and he laughed at me and said no. <laughs> Why? Why did he say no? I mean, what 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 William Thompson is saying, Patty, is obviously hugely important. Oh, huge! Yes. Well, it might be the most important thing to happen in terms of healthcare and our sovereignty, the, the rights to have our own sovereign bodies. This guy might be the most important guy ever to raise his head above the parapet for a long, long time. So, why are they not? When is he going to go public? Are we ever going to see him in front of a judge? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, he is definitely going to be in front of a judge. I know that Robert Kennedy is working on a case. And, and just to, so I'll tell you about my case. Um, we've been working. Uh, we sent a notice of intent to sue uh, to Health and Human Services uh, about two months ago. I had to give them 60 days notice. And I notified them that we would be bringing a lawsuit on behalf of Baby Doe versus Merck. 
Under the Vaccine Act, um, there is a provision that does allow you to sue uh, the manufacturer if you can uh, prove fraud. And, and clearly we have fraud here, but <laughs> excuse me, the fraud that we're seeing is on the CDC's part. And the CDC has immunity. And what that means is you can't sue Thompson. You can't touch Thompson. So why is Thompson important to my case? Well, I can tie Thompson to Merck. And I can go back, as I wrote in the blog, to 2000 when Robert Kennedy wrote about this secret meeting outside of Atlanta where Merck and uh, CDC doctors got together. And I've read the transcript and they clearly uh, knew vaccines were causing brain injury. And at the conclusion of the uh, conference, they agreed not to tell anyone. I mean, that absolutely happened. And then uh, about a year, and then Dr. Wakefield's study came out <laughs> and CDC commissioned Dr. Thompson and Dr. Thorson to, to refute what Andy yeah, Wakefield yeah. said. And then when it turned out that they actually proved what Andy Wakefield said, they destroyed the evidence. And, and Merck's hand was involved in all of that. Merck, Merck was involved in, in Simpson Woods. Merck uh, was involved with those CDC studies. And then you go to the, the hearings on the autism hearings. Merck was involved again there in discrediting uh, Dr. Wakefield's evidence that was uh, supposed to be introduced in one of those cases, in the case called Cedillo. What, what is uh, interesting about the test cases and where we're bringing our case is on this young boy who lives in New York City. After Hannah Poling's case was settled by the government, the government's expert witness testified that Hannah's autism was the result of a metabolic overload. And what that meant is she was deluged with shots. She couldn't handle it. And uh, she developed encephalopathy, which is a swelling of the brain and, and autism as a result. That doctor's report was never offered in, in the autism proceedings. The court never saw that. And, and people criticize the court and say, oh, you know, it was a sham, this or that. The court was restrained. Why, had, Why didn't they see it? Because <laughs> that, that's what we want to get to the bottom of. Because, um, you know, Hannah Poland's case was settled. It was, con it was settled in a confidential agreement. She was pulled out as a test case. And my client, Baby Doe, the young boy from New York City, was put in, in her place. And the government and the, the court never saw uh, Hannah Poling's expert report. Uh, and so therefore, they had no medical theory of causation to link autism, the vaccines. The six cases got dismissed, including my client, Baby Doe. And all the 5,000 petitions were dismissed. And from there on, every person on earth who opposes uh, any kind of research or investigation into vaccine safety uh, points to not only Dr. Wakefield's uh, observations, uh, they point to the vaccine court. And all weekend, I've been watching doctors on TV saying, oh, there are studies proving that, you know, vaccines don't cause autism and the court dismissed the case. Well, that's not what happened. And, and so in Baby Doe versus Merck, um, our our sixty day period is up, and uh, we're fixing to uh, file that here shortly, which is very timely, given the awareness and the spotlight here in New York City on Andy's movie, and uh, we're we're hoping to crack this open. At which time I would subpoena Dr. Thompson. I'll bring him in and ask him to, you know, get say him on the record. Over. I tell you what, Paddy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the program. I think what you're doing is amazing. I really do. You have no idea how amazing it is. I, I, people like you, you, you always, you know, I'm always amazed by you're so down to earth and you plow through the work and you don't really understand the impact you're having on people. I think it's brilliant. The world needs to know what's happening. And there have been parents have been listening to this tonight and they're very concerned. They, they're in different parts of the UK and they don't want to vaccinate their young babies and they're worried about blowback from the local health authority and from teachers and uh, listening to this is going to give them um, great hope. I have tweeted out where people can read, where they can find your blog. It's pfinblog.weebly.com. 
uh, terrific writing by Patty there. Uh, ignored the typos, I'm, I'm told to tell people, Patty. Ignored the typos. She does a lot of this when she's on trains and on planes using a, a cell phone. I but, was a cell phone when I wrote that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm not going to laugh. My, my writing is absolutely diabolical. It's deplorable. Thanks for giving us your time. We're going to watch this one closely. And um, Godspeed to you and to all your team. Oh, thank you so much. And, and could you ask people to visit me on Facebook and Twitter too? I'm, I'm the good health lawyer, uh, Patricia Finn, on uh, both Facebook and Twitter. And, and to, you know, to keep the faith and, and to pray for, for me and my team and the kids that we represent. And, and we'll do the best we can to, to help as many people as we can. Fantastic. God bless you. You too, thank Patty. You. Thanks. Talk to you again. Bye for now. Uh, it's a lovely... Uh, the absolutely terrific Patricia Finn on the line to us there from New York City.